I'm Pastor Brian. I'm the youth pastor here, and I want to welcome those of you who showed up for the wedding yesterday and thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to hang out after the wedding and go to church and hear Pastor Ryan speak? Surprise. (laughs) Sorry sorry to disappoint you. Um, I get to preach this morning, and if you want to watch Pastor Ryan and hear Pastor Ryan preach, he does it every Sunday morning, and you can watch it online. You can go back and check out the recordings and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, this morning, I'm going to share with you a section of Scripture that, uh, oh, you know I'm a youth pastor, so I like to exaggerate. You've probably heard preached a million times. And uh, the reason that I have focused on this section of Scripture is because of the things that have been going on in life recently. And a lot of the folks, well, especially in my life, and for those around, uh, around the church, uh, and it ties so wonderfully with Pastor Ryan's sermon from last week. So I, I was thinking about this, and I thought, you know, when you watch the State of the Union address, the president gets up there and tells you about all the wonderful things happening in the country, and then after the address, they get somebody from his party to come alongside and say, this is what the president said. Everything is great. And I love watching those just for the entertainment purpose because those people will say 15 things that we just heard the president say, you know? It's like, oh, the economy's good. Yeah, that's what the president just said. They, they say nothing new. So that's who I am this morning. I'm the guy coming along our president <laughs> telling you what he said last week and you're gonna sit in the congregation and go, That's exactly what our pastor said last week. So it's going to be fun. (laughs) Everybody likes the reruns, right? Anyhow, Romans chapter 12. I'm going to do a lot of scripture reading because that's what my pastor likes. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by grace given you, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment. In accordance to the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with one member, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the other. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is philosophizing, then philosophize in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's encouraging, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, then do so cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to the good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another, uh, another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patience in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low positions. Don't be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to revenge and to repay, says the Lord. 
If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will be heaping burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, that's a lot of stuff in there, and I'm going to focus on the beginning of it, and on the end of it, we're going to kind of skip some of the stuff in the middle. Are you ready? Anybody? Anybody with me? Okay. Let me explain. Well, let, let, me, let me just start over again, okay? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper act of worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this realm, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind. This is the section of Scripture that has been stuck in my mind and on my heart for, for quite some time. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind. It seems that in today's world, we want to have the benefits without putting in the work. Um, and I was thinking about the church and thinking about church people and people that I've known over the years, and I have seen uh, God working in people's lives and them come to the understanding that, yes, I need to make a commitment to Christ. And you know what? I have, I have sinned, and I've fallen short of his glory, and I've asked God to forgive me, and uh, he's done so, and it feels so good to become part of God's kingdom. And then they stop. And then if you look at the rest of their lives, it's exactly the same as it was beforehand. So I have a question for you, a rhetorical question, just answer it in your mind. Uh, does, your life, does your life look different now than, when, than before when you were not a Christian? Do people in your life see a difference in you now than before you were a Christian? I worked at a stone quarry for 10 years in Swayze, uh, Pipe Creek Jr. Uh, there was a plant behind the stone quarry called Calcium Products. I worked at Calcium Products. We took gravel, like in your driveway, and we crushed it down to smaller bits. So we took like gravel and made it into sand, and then we sold it to chicken farmers to put in chicken feed because our stone was really high in limestone, and that was good for chicken eggs. So nice, hard chicken eggs because of the limestone, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I worked in this, this stone quarry for 10 years, and uh, it was a dirty, dark, nasty place, and it was hard work, and it was always hot, and all, blah, 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 blah. One day while I was working in there, uh, I realized that I needed to go back to college, okay? So I went and talked to my boss, and he uh, allowed me to switch shifts so I could go back to college. But in that process, we were talking uh, about church stuff with my coworkers. And I had mentioned the name of this guy who uh, I knew from church, and they knew when they used to work together in the glass factory. And I mentioned his name, and, and they're getting their coffee, and I had said something about him, and I don't know why we were talking to him, but they stopped in their tracks and they turned around and they said, who are you talking about? And I told them the guy's name. And they were like, there is no way that guy goes to church. The guy that I knew was a greeter. He was always at the front door of the church. He always opened the door. He always had a smile on his face. He was the most welcoming, kindest guy that you would ever meet. I mean, he was just amazing. He was the perfect church greeter. You know, sometimes you get church greeters who don't know how to smile and they're angry. Here, yeah, welcome to church. Come on and sit down. <laughs> or you have guys like this who are super friendly. I mean, he was amazing. Just the gentlest, amazing guy you could possibly imagine. Think of the nicest person you know, and this is the guy I was talking about. These guys did not know him that way. And, and we, we made the dots, and we were talking about the same dude. And they said, I worked with him at the glass factory. On our lunch breaks, he would go to the tavern for one reason, to get into a fight. 
And he was a tiny, little, thin guy. And I'm like, what? He said, yeah, he'd go to the tavern just to get in fights. And I've seen that guy beat five people up in the tavern. And his lunch hour <laughs> in between shifts. It's like, you're nuts. There's no way. And it was the same guy. And I, I talked to him at church, and he kind of, I, I told him who I'd met and the guys that I worked with. And you could kind of see he was a little backward about it. And he said to me, I'm not the same person <laughs> that I used to be. Why is that? In view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your proper act of worship. Do not conform anymore to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind. He was transformed from the person that he used to be into the person that God called him to be. And it was night and day difference. I've been thinking a lot about transformation. Uh, 18 years ago, Joseph, how old are you? Where are you? Are you 18? Okay, 18 years ago, that was my son, by the way, the guy going off to Indiana Wesleyan to study engineering. 18 years ago, I remember Jay coming into the room and saying, guess what? What? I'm pregnant. What? <laughs> You're joking. Joseph's older sister. Anna, how much older is she still in here? Oh, okay, she took the kids away. Okay. So... How old is Anna? Do you know? She was born in 2000, so she's 23. Joseph's 18, so 18 to 23. I know the dates. I don't know the years. I can't do math on the fly. So Anna is five years older than Joseph, okay? I was going to turn 40 when Jay told me the news. We were surprised, none the least, about how our lives were being transformed. Joseph started kindergarten the same year his oldest sister was starting college. Okay? There's a big gap in between these guys. And transformation, it transformed our family from a family of three to a family of four, which is a big difference. And I have watched him grow from a baby, he used to be a baby, believe it or not. I used to hold him in my arms. And now he's a, he's a, a, a strong, handsome, healthy young man. That's transformation. The story I told about the guy from the stone quarry was a guy who would beat up people just for the fun of it into the most amazing, kindest, gentlest guy that you would ever meet. That's transformation. Romans chapter 12 tells us that we need to be transformed by renewing of our mind. If your life is the same today as it was when you became a Christian, you're missing the next steps. God wants to transform you and change you into the person that he's called you to be. And sometimes it's this difference between night and day, like my friend who was a greeter, Joseph's transformation didn't happen. It's taken him 18 years to go from a baby to a man. Sometimes that's the way the transformation happens. It's a slow, meticulous process of God guiding us and teaching us and changing us and forming us and changing us and forming us and changing us until we stop and look back and think about who we were before we met Christ and who we are now, are now today. And it's as dramatic as a baby and a giant 18-year-old standing in front of you. God has called you to be different. He has called you to transform into his image. And then, you know, the next section of the scripture that talks about the church world, that's the part I'm going to skip. So God has called us in, because of his mercy, 
He has called us to be transformed. We need to look different than the world. If the world looks at us and doesn't see any difference in our lives, other than occasionally we go to a building on Sunday and sing songs together, if our attitudes and our actions and our reactions haven't been changed and transformed by God, we're, we're, we're missing the process because Romans 12 I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Don't conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And what does that look like? Last week... I'm going to flip back. This is your sermon rerun, and I hope that you all know the answers to this who were here last week. We read Pastor Ryan was teaching us from the book of Luke, and it it struck me because he was talking about the differences of this world and what God has called us to be. But to to those of you who are listening... Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. The world tells us, crush your enemies. Destroy them. Overpower them. Wipe them out. In view of God's mercy in his transformation, in his reaction, we're to love our enemies. That's a night and day difference. That's transformation from thinking like this world into thinking the way that God wants us to think. If they curse you, what does this world say? If somebody stands against you, what should you do? Man, go for the knees, take their knees out, punch them in the throat so they can't breathe, poke them in the eyes they can't see, and then they will know they should never curse you. God says, be transformed in view of my mercy, the mercy that I've shown you. You don't deserve any of this stuff. I have given you everything. In God's mercy, in the view of God's mercy, instead of cursing those people, the thoughts and actions of this world, God says, bless them. If you love those who love you, what credit is it to you? Even these people love people who love them. I have called you to love the people that don't love you. And you know, I'm thinking of this transformation, and I'm thinking of the way that God has called us to do it, and it's an example. We are to live out an example of what we've received from Christ and to do things because he has done them for us. We need to model that and do that for him. And you know how hard that is? Because I and we are always being pulled into thinking like this world. We're, we see it in our movies and our songs and all kinds of stuff. We're in this for us. It's all about me. And Christians, God has called you to live for others. And it's a transformation. And sometimes it happens instantly when you kneel at an altar and God, you you kneel down a sinner and you stand up a, a saint and it happens, boom. I am not the person I used to be. Sometimes it's a gradual 18 year process. Slowly God moving you. And sometimes you don't realize it. And then sometimes as God changes you and works in your life, your thought patterns start to change. And instead of want to punch that guy in the face, you kind of think, oh, I don't want to do that. (laughs) I don't want to punch that guy in the face. Why don't I want to do that? Because God wouldn't want that. And then we, we slowly shift over to, I don't want to punch that guy in the, I want to punch that guy in the face. I don't want to punch that guy in the face to, I'm going to pray for him. Man, that guy really needs Jesus. And it's amazing when, when that happens and you can go, oh, I remember the old days. 
God has been working in my life. And that's what he wants for you. He's called all of us to be transformed. Go back and and read Luke, the section that Pastor Ryan taught about last week. And, and, And there's the contrast. Instead of thinking like the world, this is what God wants you to think. Instead of thinking like the world, this is what God wants you to think. Instead of thinking like the world, this is what God wants you to think. And then read Romans chapter 12, where he says, be transformed by renewing of your mind. Then you can test what's right, because that's your spiritual act of worship. Bless those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Because this is your spiritual act of worship. If you love only those who love you, what credit do you have? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you only do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High God. Be merciful, just as your Father has been merciful. View of God's mercy. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Nothing that I have said today is new to you. We know this. We've heard it before. We heard it. We heard it last week, you know? But if you're like me, uh, I don't know what the, the positive spin on stubborn is. Can, what, what was it? Yes. Yeah, all of those words. I, I think stubborn, ten, tenacious would be good, you know? Sometimes I have to hear things over and over and over and over again before it sinks into my sunburnt head. And I think today's sermon is just that. This is, this is the guy after the president gives the State of the Union address saying the exact same things that the president just said. Not the other one who says, oh, everything that he said was a lie. It's the one that's still on his team. Whatever, whatever president it is, he's got that one person on their team who gets up and says, oh, yeah, everything he said was true. And he said these five things. Yep, just heard them. That's what today's sermon is. A reminder to all of us who walk in faith to know that we cannot remain the same because God has called us to be transformed. Transformed. We can't be the same people we were when we knelt down and asked God to forgive of all of our sins. And he said, yes, you are now my child. We have to get up and we have to move towards him. And if you're feeling that you've been stuck in that process. Today's a good day to make a commitment to God to follow him with all of your heart and with all of who you are and with everything you've got because it's a grind sometimes. It really is. But God is with you every single step of the journey And he is rooting for you, and he is cheering you on, and he is pulling you, and he's sometimes pushing you, and he wants the very best for you. And being stuck isn't what he's called us to do. Will you pray with me? Father, there's been so much transformation in my life here I think of my baby who was just a tiny little kid. Yesterday I was at a wedding. The two people standing at the altar were tiny little kids not too long ago. You have transformed them. Lord, we see it all around us. The seed that's put in the ground is transformed into a plant that bears fruit and we get to eat it. Lord, help us to make transformation a part of our life. 
Lord, you're calling each of us to get closer to you, and you're drawing each of us closer. Lord, help us not to have brick feet. Help us move quickly into the area. And Lord, if there's things that we are struggling with, Lord, help us to give those to you, to overcome those, to be transformed by a renewing of our minds. Help us to love our enemies. Help us not to think like the world thinks. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your kindness and your love and your patience. And Lord, I pray that your blessing will fall upon those who hear this message. And Lord, you will change us and transform us as only you can. Have your way in our lives, Lord. We pray this in your name. Amen. If you're a dad, happy Father's Day. Uh, You are dismissed. Go in peace and be different tomorrow. You're dismissed.